Welcome back to the Ross Bolin Podcast, otherwise known as RBP, presented by Bolin Media. I am your host, Ross Bolin, here today for the second time ever with my new number two. Bolin Media employee number two has arrived, Mr. Chris Colson, a.k.a. Coles. What's up, dude? Doing good. Great day. You got I, moved in today. I did get moved in today. You're, mo- you're moved out of my guest room. I'm no longer taking space up in your domicile in the bachelor pad, although it was an enjoyable stay. We had fun. We did have a good time. It was weird having a roommate again. Yeah? As you know, it's been several months for me. It has been. I've lived in solitude. We really did. Uh, we lived out the mantra, you are not alone. That's yes, what we're we did. For. Finally. Actually, it was like it couldn't have been better timing on that front because, like, as y'all know, tough mental health week for me last week. Um, a lot of that for me does end up revolving around being alone. Yeah. Which I was explaining to my dad yesterday is so silly because, like, I can walk into my backyard and see my neighbor in his backyard, literally 15 feet away from me, in human feet, and it doesn't matter. Nope. He might as well be dead. I can go out and look out my front window and see people walking their dogs and families going around and shit. Doesn't fucking matter, dude. It's like you have to be someone I know and in the same fucking place as me, or it's just something weird about it, my personal panic disorder version of it um, that gets fucked up by that. So having you there this weekend after going through that week was perfect. Where, at other times, I may have been annoyed by your presence. This weekend, you were a blessing. I'm, I'm kidding, of course. So I couldn't be more excited to have you here, man, as I've said many, many, many times. Now, you crushed your first episode. If you guys have not listened to episode 312 yet, that was literally the first podcast, I want to reiterate this, that Chris has ever recorded. Ever, yeah. Not like your first episode of RBP. Nope. It was your first episode of any Anything. show at any point. Correct. Like, could you ever even been recorded on a microphone before that? Not a microphone this nice. Absolutely not. Just to, like your personal, when you were a child, maybe? Yeah. You know, like vo- on, the, on the Kevin McAllister fucking, well, you're too young for that reference. Voice memos on the phone, you know, you have that stage when you're about 11 where you think you might be a good singer, yeah. and then you sing to yourself on sure, your phone, and sure. you play it back, and you're like, yep, I'm not a good singer. I'm hitting that phase now, ah. at 33, which well, is why I've started rapping and shit. Cause ah, I'm, well, your rap career is going significantly better than my singing career. It has gone fairly decently so far, I have to admit. Um, One thing I've noticed, with you being 21 and me being 33, just through, you know, the uh, we've probably been, what is this, we're three minutes in or something, mm-hmm. an hour in... 18 minutes of podcasting so far. I think I've aged myself like 122 times. That's going to continue to happen. I'm making references to movies that came out before Coles was born and shit and like expecting him to react to it. I got lots of people (laughs) DMing me about my lack of seeing friends. Yeah. Uh, I might have to go back and watch it now. I got lots of text messages from friends of mine, no pun intended, being like, how is this kid you hired not seeing friends? And frankly... It's it's like the generational gap plus like dude I mean Friends was tight but it's like it's yeah. a 90s show it like it is it is very much a time capsule for a very specific period that if you weren't really of age yet like I don't know that that's a thing you have to go fucking experience. And right I had there. the like how I met your mother phase kind of that was a, I guess I never the watched newer that. version of Friends. I never watched a, a single episode of that. So if you want to come at me for a show I haven't seen I've never seen how I met your mother. It's just generational. And I know how it ends. Yeah. It's not great. To be an even bigger prick. I know the exact way that they... Anyway, congratulate Chris uh, on social media as I asked y'all to last week. And if this is your first episode hearing him, meet Chris Colson, a.k.a. Coles, as you will hear me call him often. He is the man. We're so stoked to have him here. And the new era of RBP has begun. RBP 313 is brought to you by Felix Gray Glasses. As y'all know, I constantly have my face in a screen from morning to night every single day. There is no cutting back. If you saw my screen time app on my iPhone, it would depress you greatly. There are literally several screens pointed at me right now, including two cameras. We game hard every night on Twitch. Uh, You can't escape this thing, and more, more, more now than ever. We're relying on technology to do our jobs, to stay in touch with our family members, and stay safe and social distance from people and from our companies and our uh, professions. And the fact is... You get all this blue light exposure in your eyes when you're having to use all these screens. It's bad for you. And there are a lot of blue light glasses on the market that, uh, that are not as good as Felix Grey. Unfortunately, not all blue light glasses were created equally. As you can see, I've got a couple pairs in front of me right now. These are my personal sets from home. Um, if you're watching on YouTube.com slash Media, 
I couldn't be a bigger fan of these guys. They're the best. Um, screens produced most blue light at a certain point in the spectrum. It's 455 nanometers. And most clear blue light lenses only filter 2 to 3% in that range. Felix Gray, on the other hand, uses a proprietary filtering technology to filter 15 times more blue light in the same range. So if you've experienced all the symptoms of... of like, if you're me, it's contacts all day, right? And by the end of the day, I've been wearing glasses and contacts since I was, like, 12 years old. By the end of the day, I've got tired, dry eyes. I'm getting headaches, blurry vision. I have trouble sleeping. The Felix Grays, the second I slip them on, comfort. Immediate, significant symptom relief. Nine in ten Felix Gray customers report that significant symptom relief, by the way. They're phenomenal. Their frames are beautiful. They're hand-finished from durable, super lightweight Italian acetate. They have over 200,000 happy customers. The two pairs I've got in front of me right now, these are the Nash. I'll put them on even though I have contacts and won't be able to see anything on youtube.com slash bowling media. The Nash, they're beautiful. I love them. And I also have some of the Faraday frames and uh, they're clear, a little more stylish, if you will, Coles. I feel like uh, like I should be coding. Absolutely. Building some kind of app. That's what you need to bring your age down just a bit. The hip glasses. Exactly. A lot, that's also why I wore this backwards hat today. I'm making wrong. How do you do, old. fellow kids? Uh, Felix Gray is incredible. They're available in prescription, non-prescription, and readers. They have you covered with optical glasses for work, sleep glasses in the evening that are clinically proven to increase melatonin secretion when worn leading up to bedtime, and you can try them for 30 days risk-free. All you have to do is go to felixgrayglasses.com slash RBP for the absolute best quality blue light filtering glasses on the market. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com slash RBP. Do what I did. Start taking care of your eyes, your ojos. Feel better, work smarter. Shipping and returns are totally free at Felix Gray, felixgrayglasses.com slash RBP. Some announcements and shouts very quickly up front. Um, some psychotic shit stick idiot who refused to abide by the mask in, mask out rules of our studio here, Permanent Record, where Mike Moody and Grant Davis and Mariah Gossett have been the best producers in the game for me for over a year now. Some fuck blasted their Google reviews after they kindly asked that Next time, all right, he was informed of the first time the protocol here to keep everybody safe because obviously several people use this studio for several different shows and they have gone through all manner of precautions to make sure that Chris and I remain safe, switching out the microphone, fuck whatever these are called, covers, wiping everything down after every single, every single session, every single session, and uh, they... Uh, you know, you have to wear a mask on your way in and a mask on your way out. And this dude, for whatever reason, is f uh, one of these fuck sticks who actively thinks that's like some type of uh, assault on his rights. Point is, they blasted Permanent Records Google reviews with a few negative reviews. We cannot have that. Absolutely so I have not. a very special request for the gang up front. I need y'all to Google Permanent Record Studios Austin, Texas. It's Permanent RCRD Studios and just put Austin, Texas after it. It'll pull up right there. Give as many five-star reviews as you can. They produce literally every single one of Bowling Media's podcasts. Mike is the only reason we were even able to keep doing episodes when shit hit the fan by helping me soundproof my home office, getting me set up with a microphone and shit. Please do this for me. Google Permanent Record Studios, Austin, Texas. It's that the first little box that pops up. You'll click on that shit. It'll say reviews. Click on there. Write a review. Give them five stars. Write several kind sentences, as many as you. Make it a haiku if you want. Just make it positive. Tell them thank you for enabling you to listen to this show this whole year, literally. It would not have gone down this way if not for Mike Moody and Permanent Record Studios. So make sure y'all have their back. I'm not cool with that at all. It's not okay that this dude did that. Fuck that guy. Cancel him out 20-fold. Please, gang, go heavy and hard on this. Google Permanent RCRD Studios, Austin, Texas. Make this right. Thank you. Happy 22nd birthday to Burke O'Day coming up July 20th. Happy, by the way, I've said it 100,000 times, Coles. If somebody throws me a birthday shout out way in advance, I'm doing the shout out way in advance. We're getting it out there. Be I know that's only five days away, but sometimes I'll do it like two weeks in advance because I can't save them all forever. I lose them, is my point. We don't have a great birthday system uh, in place yet. Coles, that might be your next project. There we go. Happy birthday to my, gr my girl Zoe coming up on the 20th as well. Big love, stay up. Rip Ripski's on Sunday uh, for sure. I'm on a tea break. For those of you who are unaware, no uh, smoking weed for like eight, eight or nine days now, I think. Eternity. It feels like a thousand days, but we will talk more about the tea break in its uh, entirety, the whole experience for me next week on Monday's episode to kind of recap how it went and the first time smoking since I uh, had taken the tea break. Happy birthday to Natalie, 22nd birthday. Lots of folks turning 22 right now. 
Wild stuff. That's great. What a coincidence. Keep the, uh, the RBP Impact Initiative emails coming our way. If you have a story about how this show has impacted you or a loved one or a friend, share it with us. Just put RBP Impact Initiative in the subject line. Ross at RossBolandPodcast.com is my email. And eventually, when we have collected enough of those, we're going to do another episode focusing on those Impact Initiative uh, stories because some of them are very moving, incredible, inspiring, awesome, and they keep fuel in the tank for, uh, for Chris and I. So we love doing those. TFM readings of the TFM book, chapters 1 through 10 are available on youtube.com slash Boland Media. Chapter 11 is probably coming later this afternoon. The thing is, we did that reading in the middle of the Coach Doug's raid that blew up our Twitch, and like I didn't want to shut that off and then lose all that audience, so I just did the reading straight up right there for about 700 more people than usual, which was huge for us. Great time. It was indeed. It was um, about 45 minutes after I showed up as well. So It was like one of those fucking life moments oh. where yeah. Skies open. Yeah, and just a fucking ray of light hit both of us, and we just went into full seizure mode. I blacked out during that stream, by the way. I don't remember a single bit of it. With no drugs or alcohol involved for me. I just, my brain just went, and just focused and went. Um, I think what I'm going to do is put up the video of that full stream. So if you've ever wondered what the Twitch streams look like, you can watch on youtube.com slash Bolin Media. The reading of chapter 11 will be in there. I'll give you all a time stamp, so if you're only there for that, you can fucking skip to it, you dick. You don't want to watch me play Warzone? Come on. Not cool, man. YouTube.com slash Bolin Media. This upcoming Sunday at 9 p.m. Central, the final chapter. Chapter 12 of the TFM book and the prologue or the eulogy or the epilogue, whatever. We, whatever. I can't, I can't remember. We're going to be doing that shit. Twitch.tv slash Boss Rollin live, 9 p.m. Central, Sunday evening, coming this Sunday, chapter 12, and then whatever comes after that, and there's some photos and shit. Big shouts to everybody who's been tuning in when we're live on twitch.tv slash boss rolling. We've been focusing on Warzone. Last night, Coles actually did a solo stream. I was completely uninvolved. I, in fact, I was in bed watching Dark for Oysters, Clams, and Cockles, our TV and film podcast, and I got the notey on my phone that I was live on Twitch, and I was like, well, that's fucking interesting because I'm sitting right here. So I pull it up, and I'm like, oh, shit. This fool has, like, a good bit of viewership going here. It wasn't too bad. The gang showed up. The gang showed up. Absolutely. And you won your first game of Apex Legends in... It had to to have been a week since you played. Months. Months? Gotta be months. I mean, this was absolutely one of those... uh, easier to ask for forgiveness and permission type of things. Uh, I got yeah, a when I peer- first got on, you were like, uh-oh, I, I might be fired. Got a little peer pressure in the Discord to go live on Apex, but the gang really showed up. Uh, we got a raid in there as well from a buddy back home, so it was a fantastic time throw, with throw the gang. Throw him a shout-out, man. Yeah, that was uh, cool as hell Pin, he's an awesome Fortnite player. If you watch Fortnite, check him out on Twitch and Twitter. But Was it twitch.tv slash N? N-P-E-N. Yeah, there you go. Definitely check him out as well. But yeah, the gang showed up. Pin's gang showed up. We had a great time. The energy was high. It was so much fun, so make sure you tune in next time thank you all so much for supporting us on twitch um for those of you who don't know it is that is a very large part of what we're doing here and is going to continue to become more and more important as we move on so we've been focusing on warzone mostly cole's got in some apex last night i've downloaded some other games that we're going to be mixing in like fucking tropico where i'm a dictator of a small island uh we're going to be hooking up the n64 and the super nintendo in the coming months as well so we can do throwback games like y'all may have seen barstool doing i have like 32 N64 games and like 15 or so Super Nintendo games that we're going to be able to rock with and all the good ones. Don't even ask. If you're, if you're about to say, well, do you have... Yes, I have it. Well, do, do you have... The, do, yes, I have GoldenEye, dude. Yes, I have Mario Kart. Yes, the, all the obvious ones I have. Thank you. Um, Twitch.tv slash Boss Roland. That's it for announcements and shouts. First segment. A lampshade in some creepy apartment. Also known as Wayfair Sex Trafficking Conspiracy Madness. So, Coles, we're like five days into this story. Yes. It's not fresh. No. And the lack of freshness is why we are going to be discussing it today. Absolutely. Because the fact that it hasn't died out is insanely asinine. And for those of you who have no idea what we're talking about, let's, let's give a little brief uh, summary up front. Wayfair, it's a furniture delivery company that literally every rug in my house, like after my wife left me, I, uh, I had to get new rugs, right? Because she scooped the rugs for whatever reason. It was like one of the things I lost in the divorce, my rugs. I came out one morning and I went, no! Because my feet were touching just bare tile, which as we all know, is, is, that's no way to live. So I had to get new rugs. I went through Wayfair. 
and uh, they were phenomenal, man. They like they delivered in a very timely fashion. And you have great rugs. They look great. Yeah. The people on Instagram, when I put up pictures of my crib and shit, are like, where'd you get that rug? And I'm like, Wayfair. There we go. I have probably sent a thousand people to Wayfair in the past six months, dude. Cut the check. Which makes it even funnier. We'll only cut the check if this ends up being 100% false, which I'm pretty sure it is. It seem- um, It just makes it even funnier when this conspiracy theory started to unfold that... Uh, well, I'll just I'll give you a brief synopsis here from fox6now.com. God knows what that is, but it's pretty much the same story everywhere. It doesn't matter how credible or not credible it is. A Reddit user, all these theories start on Reddit. On last Thursday, he posted a screen grab of Wayfair's website showing armoires that cost five figures with human names for the products, which led to the user to speculate whether the pricey ca- the cabinets were in fact people for sale. So just from the get-go, Completely insane concept. Yes. That Wayfair, one of the biggest furniture companies in the world that trades publicly on the stock market, would sell human beings disguised as furniture on their website. Publicly. Wild. Yes, without any type of backdoor. Or Why wouldn't they make a separate site? Yeah. Like, there's no, it just doesn't make sense yeah. from the get go, right? Well, it, it just got worse from there. Um, Believers in the Wayfair conspiracy theory also prompted people to use a Russian search engine to search for the stock keeping unit number, which is a skew for those of you who have worked in that arena, that corresponds with Wayfair products that allegedly return image results with children in bathing suits, Newsweek reported. So, like, here's what people were doing. They were finding the cabinet. It would be, like, $14,999 and have the name, like, Sansa. And then they'd go find a missing child with the name Sansa. And then they'd say that that was how it went down. And in a lot of the cases, it turned out the child that they were trying to say had been sold by Wayfair, like, had actually already been found. Yeah. And, like, at no point was turned into a cabinet or put in a cabinet or sold by a cabinet maker or a furniture company that moves cabinets. For me, it gets the weirdest with Wayfair's response, though, because I feel like they could have handled this in an incredibly better way. Like, they gave it the most just relaxed kind of, no, it's fine, trust me, it's okay. Their public statement, just read it. Just fucking read this thing. So their statement, the public statement from Wayfair says, There is, of course, no truth to these claims. The products in question are industrial-grade cabinets that are accurately priced, and again, these cabinets are $12,699.99 and $14,499.99. I believe one was even $16,000 yeah, or whatever. Yeah, but they kept reducing those. Like, weren't Some of them were price errors that yeah. they then reduced to the normal prices, which makes their statement almost feed into the conspiracy. Exactly. And so the statement goes on to say, recognizing that the photos and descriptions provided by the supplier did not adequately explain the high price point, we have temporarily removed the products from from site and to rename them to rename them and provide a more in-depth description and photos that accurately depict the product to clarify the price point. So in that it sounds like to me those cabinets are accurately priced at $12,699 or whatever. They just weren't pictured correctly or weren't described correctly. First of all, how do you have a cabinet? It better be the size of a house and made of diamonds. Yeah. To be $14,000. That's what I mean, we were joking like what would it take for you to drop 12k on a on like a filing cabinet, basically. That's all it looked like, and it didn't look huge. That's the quote was handled, and all that they, did was they add to the whole, fire. Yes, it didn't go well after the quote. No, it went. It's gone much worse since. This has continued through today, to the point that. Um, by the way, this has all widely been disproven. That's why I said up front, like there's very, 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 very little shred of doubt that this is this is actually real at this point yeah like this is total and utter horseshit just a weird coincidence in a couple of instances that then people were able to run with all these screenshots and they're just screenshots too there were no links and they were like the grainy like screenshotted three times and you yep yep and you can also you gotta remember man a screenshot can be doctored in pretty much any way shape or form especially when you're talking about numbers and shit like that so it was really shady from the get-go they just boggled their PR response, which just fed the flames even more. And then people right now, for whatever reason, they need shit to point to. Like It's like we don't already have enough evil in the world going on. People are just directly looking for shit. And th- I'll give you some icing on the cake. You and I already knew we were going to discuss this today. In yes. fact, 
This is the segment we cut from last episode because we went long. And we've been talking about it since Sunday. And I'm glad we did because development last night, this is a very intelligent girl that I went to college with who hits me in my DMs, right? She's, she's, I'm not going to drop names or nothing like that, yeah. any type of detail. Just suffice it to say, um, it's not like that if you're trying to make it like that. And smart girl that I was friends with and that somebody that's like, I have no reason to disrespect in any way, shape, or form. But she slides into my DMs and she says, it, she sends me a, a, a Tom Hanks Instagram post from 2016 that had one of the skew numbers from the Wayfair scandal, like in the sand next to a glove. It's a strange, Tom Hanks puts up very weird photos. Okay. And again, I don't know how to make sense of that, but it said, her, her message said, unfollow this pedophile. He is a pedophile. And I, I just responded, LOL, because like, listen, if you really are on board with Tom Hanks being a pedophile, you've derailed in some way, shape, or form. Like, if you don't think that we would know that by now, it's Tom Hanks, bro. Like, what are you doing? Are you trying to destroy every genuine good person we had? Like, cancel culture is so out of control at this point. We're trying to throw Tom Hanks in with a Wayfair child sex trafficking scandal. Scandal? Scandal. More like conspiracy. Conspiracy theory. Yeah. Yeah, I should stop saying It's very Pizzagate-y. Do you remember that Pizzagate thing that Do happened I a remember? couple years that You're back? still going. Yeah. It's still, people are still all over that. Yeah, I saw people literally hashtagging some of the tweets about the Wayfair scandal with Pizzagate, which is a weird thing because she Pizzagate was wrong, and and I don't. It if doesn't you really matter. Believe it in doesn't your- matter if it's wrong. They don't give a fuck. That's the crazy part. They don't give a fuck. It's uh. just about having something to point to and like distract them from reality or whatever. Absolutely. But surely there are healthy ways to do that. This chick even included. She put three pizza emojis in the text in the DM. The self-awareness there. To, like, connect it to that, though. And I was just like, fuck me. And and to tie this to, like, an even bigger picture (sighs) thing. Chrissy Teigen right now, who I'm I'm a big fan of. Yeah. Um, Not just from her Sports Illustrated swimsuit modeling career, which is when I became a fan of her for the obvious reasons. And then she developed into a very outspoken and incredible and hilarious social media presence. Um, had I mean married John Legend and that obviously played into it some but like she has done her own thing Mm -hmm. she has built her own career she has these incredible cookbooks she does all this great shit they have this whole family now they got two kids or three kids maybe I can't remember Um, but she's been dragged into the Jeffrey Epstein flight manifest Epstein Island child sex crap so Mm -hmm. heavily and it's all tied into all this bullshit too it's all the same crowd doing all this crap all these conspiracy theorists and there's millions of these people And she was being attacked so hard over the last several weeks that she deleted, like, I think it was like 56,000 tweets yesterday because people were digging through her backlog just finding. This is what these people do. Like, I'm telling you, I get this Tom Hanks 2016 Instagram, and it's like, what the fuck? I was going to ask, do you think she went through his Instagram and found that, or somebody I guarantee it was already going viral. It was already going viral. Um, Just crazy. Chrissy had to have, like, a buddy. Like, clean her Twitter? Like, help her. Yeah. Like, clean out her Twitter and, like, I mean, it's having this... She's a mental health advocate as Absolutely. well. Is the important thing to remember. She was very much a, an outspoken mental health advocate about a post, post, uh, postpartum after she was pregnant. Mm-hmm. Um, she's struggled with anxiety. She's spoken about depression. So she's like, that's another reason that I have a great amount of respect for her. I've tried to get her on this show for years, by the way. For all y'all who complain about me not hitting my DMs, um, this is me complaining about Chrissy Teigen not reading my DM that I sent her back in 2016. Chrissy, get back to us. We want to interview you about mental health. And now this. Uh, these idiots have, are driving her insane, though, like to the point where if you go check her Twitter, you feel really bad. Like, yeah. She's legitimately worried about her family's safety. And I'll tell you why. You think you think yourself, well, this is so silly. Why would she care? It's the amount of people who don't think it's silly. Yeah. It's legitimately millions of people over the span of the globe, right? Absolutely. Being peppered by millions of human beings calling you a pedophile and with Pizzagate hashtags and the pizza emojis and uh, claiming you're part of the Wayfair and all this bullshit day after day after day after day after day after day after day. Of course that's going to break you, bro. Absolutely. So it's not just that it's like sick from a focus standpoint, like find something else to do with your time. It has a legitimate impact negatively on some people who are doing a lot of good in this world, in my opinion. Absolutely. And the scary thing is, like, 
not justifying people's actions by any way, shape, or form, but we live in a world in today's day and age where we have the Epsteins and Weinsteins and now even like Chris D'Elia and everything, all the news coming out with him recently. There's fucked up people out there. And oh, so sure. people are looking to make these connections and, and kind of tie the web together and pulling at strings because we do live in a fucked up world, but that's not the way to go about it. And it's something about like the, the let's just say, alt-right that is obsessed with the idea that Hollywood and like I watched that dumbass documentary out of shadows that all these conspiracy theory nuts believe by the okay. way the first 40 minutes of which is two stuntmen bragging about former Hollywood stuntmen bragging about their careers ah. at one point I texted my buddy who is the psycho who believes this shit yeah and I was like bro when do they get to the part that matters this is a guy talking about his stunt career in Hollywood for the first half hour and you're telling me this is the most important documentary ever made that exposes Pizzagate, Hillary Clinton, mm. Hollywood, and all the things that Hollywood does that are evil? is absolute poppycock, to use a word from Peter Pan. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's just, it's just never ending with these people. And they try to tie all these things together and make it into something that it's not. And like, Tom Hanks is literally the stretch of all stretches for me. If that dude ends up being a pedophile... I'm out. I'm going to Antarctica. I'll live out the rest of my days in an igloo. I couldn't handle that. I couldn't handle the guy who played Mr. Rogers in the in the movie reboot. The guy who said, "Oh, that's terrifying." Earn this in uh, Saving Private Ryan. I can't have him end up a pedo. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think him and his wife do like a shit ton of good too. They don't do. They, don't they? Like they're the most like charitable pe- charitable people in Hollywood. They both got fucking COVID and they survived. Did get COVID. We can't lose Tom Hanks. Uh, we can't. And, 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 and in, look, I spoke on this a little bit a couple weeks ago or whatever, but like, if you're finding yourself getting sucked down into these conspiracy theory rabbit holes, it's not just that there are actual people whose job it is to solve these type of things and look into them. It's also that you literally have, there's never been a more important time to focus on positives and like things that bring good energy to your life and healthiness. This is not that. You are aren't going to do anything. You're not going to change this narrative. You're not contributing to the story. You're not going to investigate. You're just a doofus on your couch buying into Reddit theories like that are like, have zero fucking basis in reality. Like, it's just a waste of time. It's a disconnect from reality, probably, for a lot of people. Let's them get into a different reality, you know? And I mean, that's it, man. Yeah. People need that that right now. Well, we'll fucking, instead of like accusing Tom Hanks or Chrissy Teigen of boning children, go outside and smoke a joint. That's what I'm saying. Like, look inwards. Yes. Do some self growth. Self growth. Take this opportunity to look away from Tom Hanks. Get the good vibes going. Even Michael Jackson wrote Man in the Mirror. He never looked in the mirror, I don't think. If he had, he would have been terrified. But it was a great song with, with a great message. (laughs) <laughs> Moving on from Wayfair, which again, I w- dude, the funniest thing is the second I heard this crash, like this uh, this story crack, crack uh, break, there it is, break. There we go. I was like, oh shit, I bet their stock has tumbled and I can get, I can get in low. Did we get in and low? I didn't get in. Ah. It, it, it didn't go down far enough because enough people were like, fuck that, I'm buying right now. Yeah. Like this is the dumbest shit I've ever heard and it's clearly going to drop some. I don't have the type of fundage to make pickups in, like a day trader. Yeah. So that was like a day trader opportunity that hopefully some of y'all got in on if you're loaded. But un- unbelievable. Just another ridiculous conspiracy theory among the sea of them that we have this year in 2020. Yeah. Focus on healthy stuff, people. RBP313 is also brought to you by Bombas. Bombas makes the most comfortable socks in the history of feet. They've literally rethought every little detail of the socks we wear to make them way more comfortable. I wear their performance running socks every single time I go running now. Their performance running socks are incredible. They're literally the best and most comfortable running socks I've ever worn in my life. They've got dope designs, so many styles, ankle socks, no show, performance running. The freaking, look look at these bad boys I'm wearing right now. Ah! Is that even on camera? Yep. Yeah, I'm good. My balls almost came out too, though. (laughs) YouTube.com slash Bowlin Media. They're incredible. Go to bombas.com slash RBP and you can check them out as I continue to talk about them. Um, Like I said. Super, 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 super comfy. Last year was the year of the sock. Y'all know I know my shit when it comes to socks. I'm telling you, doesn't get more comfy than Bombas. And they do more than keep feet cozy. They give back to the most vulnerable members of our community in a very cool way. Listen to this. It's fucking awesome. For every pair of socks you purchase, Bombas donates a pair to someone in need. 
So the generosity of Bomba's customers has allowed them to donate over 34 million pairs of socks and counting through their nationwide network of 3,000 giving partners. And the impact is more powerful than ever now, obviously. To those experiencing homelessness, these socks represent the dignity of putting on clean clothes. Can you imagine being homeless? How, who knows how long it's been since you had clean socks. If I was homeless and you threw these socks at me, I would shit myself with joy. They're so fucking comfortable. It's just a small comfort that especially, more than ever, people could use right now. So give a pair when you buy a pair and get 20% off your first purchase at bombas.com slash RBP. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash RBP for 20% off your first purchase. Bombas.com slash RBP. And if you're checking Chris and I's Instagrams over the coming weeks, you'll see us rocking them at different points. Of course, uh, I've got a picture of the ones I'm wearing up right now. I think I brought I bought their Pride Pack back during uh, Pride Month because the designs are dope and I support that community. And uh, you can as well. And also give a pair when you buy a pair. Bombas.com sl- uh, slash RBP. Next segment, Legends Never Die Review. Coles, you and I took the last several days to listen through Juice World's uh, posthumous? Posthumous, yeah, Post- I believe posthum- so. Posthumous? Postmortem? Post- no. Postal service? Po- Postchipa? I think it's posthumous. The, the album that dropped after he passed. Correct. Um, that is titled Legends Never Die. Juice World, of course, was an up and coming um an up and coming rap hip hop star. For some, closer to the up than the coming, if you know what I mean. Like he, he was already there. Yes, he uh, he definitely worked his way up the rap community very quickly and earned respect very quickly. And this album definitely shows that as well with some of the like speaking tracks. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, unfortunately. In December 8th of 2019, at the age of 21, he passed away from a seizure induced by acute oxy and codeine intoxication, which means he was popping oxys and then um, drinking syrup on top of that, which is, I mean, that's as close as, like, substance suicide as you can come to. Like, you're really asking for your heart to stop. If you start mixing stuff like that, it's super dangerous. Now, I'm obviously not implying in any way that he did that on purpose, but what I am going to, we're going to, we're going to be speaking to mental health, and drug abuse because that's what most of his album is about. Absolutely. And it's what made it so um, important for us to discuss, I think. I mean, the opening track is literally titled Anxiety. And heavy to listen to as well. It yeah, was it's one not of those, a light listen. No, it was definitely one of... And don't not because the songs aren't enjoyable to listen to because they are, but the message is the subject deep matter. enough in the subject matter. And knowing you're not going to forget that he passed during the album. There's no disconnect from reality. It's very... They hit you in the face. They hit you it. in the face. Yeah, absolutely. And um, no, he did a. I mean, they did a fantastic job with putting together something that I think depicted Juice World as well as it could have, but the subject matter with what happened hits significantly harder. Yes, and these posthumous albums, posthumous albums, um, they're very, very difficult to pull off because Agreed. you and I were talking about this last night. Mm-hmm. But it's like when the artist is no longer around, like regardless of how good their team is. The artist is the visionary. Yeah. They're the one that sees and can put together the package and the whole picture. And it's like, it's very rare that you get a post- posthumous out. This word is going to fuck me up the whole time. An after death album yes. that is that is perfectly put together and Correct. representative of the artist. And in this case, I would argue that that's not necessarily what we got. But we got as good as I, I I'm still very happy for it. Let me Absolutely. put it that way. On the other hand, Pop Smoke's new album... I think every single track of which is now on the on the Billboard Hot 100, if I'm not mistaken, which is just mind blowing. They absolutely crushed, and that may be the result of like what y'all have to keep in mind when these artists pass. There are varying degrees of projects and completion, right? So absolutely. like that's why we got like 36 new Tupac albums after he died because he had all these songs that he either never wanted out at all, or he was like, ah, I'll work on this more later. So you're getting unfinished versions of things. They're bringing like 27 different producers in to try to make the tracks finished and shit. Yeah, it's a tough thing to pull it's off. It's a very tough thing to pull off. Props to Pop Smokes people because that shit, whoo, through and through. Like I'll be jamming that for a minute. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good one. Not to say I won't be doing with that, doing that with Legends Never Die. It just doesn't have the same level of finished polish on it that Pop Smoke's album does. And again, that may have been intentional. I don't even I know. know if it's polish and the if more of it's just kind of like Juice World was 
very, very talented, and it feels like he had so much creative control on his albums that it feels like they did their best to recreate Juice World, and it is Juice World, but it's almost kind of like the Star Wars sequels that just came out. How they you it's Star Wars, yes. Like they they tried to mimic the original. But you can only get so close yeah. because the original is just that good. Try to capture the vibe of another pe- another person's work in like in respect to them yes. almost, or yes. as, or as part of their story in both cases with Star Wars or Juice World, and that's just very 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 difficult. It's to not do. an easy thing to do at all. Not necessarily a knock on anybody, and I'm not one of the Star Wars fans who's like uh, speaking of Star Wars. I got the James Harden uh, Jedi bobblehead going right here. How about that shit? Irony. Um, I'm not one of the fans who freaked out about like. I know a couple of the new ones weren't great. Yeah. I really loved the one where everybody dies. We won't say which one that is. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, I, I didn't freak out or anything like that. And I certainly am not going to freak out about the Juice World album. No. And I'm happy we got it because some of the songs on here are really, really great to listen to. And to hear, as somebody that's also 21, and when I'm assuming most of the songs he wrote and for this album was when he was 20 or 21. Mm-hmm. For me to hear somebody with that type of voice have that view on anxiety and really understand the struggle is really meaningful to me because a lot of people my age don't get that. And or don't want to talk about or it. Or don't want to he talk about it. He had such transparency mm-hmm. with his struggles, like almost every song. Very, ad- very admirable. That's something I've always admired Juice World for, and that's why That's his where he fans, got his audience and his absolutely. following. Yeah. That, like, for me... Uh, I wasn't as huge of a Juice World fan as I know a lot of people my age are, or people a little bit younger too as well. But for me, it was like Mac Miller, same kind of thing. Sure, I sure. looked up to Mac Miller so much because he of his spoke transparency on, on mental health. So when he passed, I felt personally connected to Mac because it felt like his songs spoke to me and really helped me relate to what I was going through at the time. And Juice played that role to so many people. Right. And for now, those fans that really connected to Juice to have one kind of final bring it all together and it's almost closure in a sense. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like oh, a absolutely. lot of his fans feel a lot of closure with this album. And it's sad, but it's also he's leaving one last positive light. A lot of these songs are gonna help a lot of people get through some dark times and understand that they're not alone in those dark times. And that's huge. Which is, like, in my opinion, the coolest thing you could possibly do as an artist. And Absolutely. I'll give you what mine would have been, all right? My Juice World, my Mac Miller was zero. Yeah. The only difference is my dude managed to stay the fuck alive. Like, yeah. by the skin of his teeth, he's still around. Um, but that was the dude for me who he spoke on depression mostly i don't think he ever touched anxiety but it was i didn't have anxiety at that point in my life frankly but he just spoke on the trials and tribulations of real life shit right like he talked about how difficult life was he didn't sugarcoat it how much pain he felt yeah how much betrayal he felt uh how difficult he found it to manage his friends his family he addressed things that like it wasn't just like i'm you know what what people who rip on rap will always say in mainstream rap in particular, well, it's just bitches, money, cars, clothes, drugs, like it's the same fucking shit every song. This was not that. No. Now, don't get me wrong. Roe did his share of like gang banging. Absolutely. But his music was more than that to me. And if he had passed at 21 or whatever, that would have been the, the legacy that he left for me. It still is. There was, uh, there was like an eight year stretch of my life where I banged Roe nonstop yeah. because he made me feel better. Absolutely. That was what it was all about. And that's what music is all about, right? 100%. Bringing people I, together. Music is music and film are two things that are super important to me because they're really the only tools and out podcasting. there that have the... And podcasting, of course. They're the only tools out there that have the ability to change human emotion instantly. You know, you, like being a DJ would be the coolest job because you're in charge of, say, 5,000 people are listening to your set. You change one song, one genre. You have physically changed the emotion of everybody in the room around you, which is crazy power to have yeah first of all but when that's artists, why so many djs end up being douchebags because they can't handle it yeah <laughs> and so i'm just saying when when people put out albums that have or when artists really go deeper because now ross and i were just talking about drake and dj Khaled are supposed to put out a new song tomorrow it's probably going to be the next tiktok ch- uh chart topper great and summer banger summer banger exactly um but when artists take the time to put out the albums that go deeper and make an impact, I think that's that's the way to use your platform in the correct way. And to lose somebody at 21 that was doing that at 21 
is wild. Wild, yeah. Because he should have had another. We should have had. It's the same thing that crushes me about Pop Smoke. It's the. It's like it crushed me less about X, yeah. as I'll just call him, because yeah. I'm not even gonna try to go down this rabbit hole yeah, of yeah, making yeah. myself remember how to pronounce this fool's name at this point. By the way, Lil Wayne still doesn't know how to pronounce his name, and he's on two Lil Wayne tracks, which yeah. I find to be absolutely disrespectful. But that's another thing for another day. Um. You lose somebody that's that in touch with that big of an audience in, in a positive way, helping them, helping all these kids, man. That's yeah. kids, man. Yeah. Like, if you're under 25, you're a fucking kid to me. Like, yeah. you're a kid to me. Yeah. Um, that, that's when you're the most in need of that type of voice and support. And they could have brought that for, like, for multiple generations mm-hmm. is the thing. You lose out on who knows how many classic albums, who knows how many more pop would have put out or... Any of any of these dudes we've mentioned, Mac, who like it's just a it's like an innumerable loss yes. to the world of art and music and mental health. And when, it feels and like it's always the it's always the ones like the Macs and the Juice Worlds and the Pop Smokes, the the guys that weren't afraid to take the creative risks and go deeper, Nipsey Hustle. Those type of people, the ones that make the biggest difference, it feels like we always lose those those ones early. What is... was the what was the name of the dude who he was Lil Peep. Lil Peep. That was another one. He was like the first one yeah. before XXX even. Yeah. Where he overdosed. He very, very clearly had huge, huge, huge issues with Xanax and with with drug abuse as a whole. Um and I didn't know anything about him until after he died. Then I went back and started listening to some of his music. Yeah. And he was very much in the same vein as Juice World. Absolutely. And he had a couple of songs where I was like, okay, this is very raw. Yeah. But this is very, very good. Yes. And I was like, fuck, it's just a loss. Yeah. Because that's not even the fully developed version of that artist yet. There's so I would many, argue yeah. the same with Juice. Absolutely. Like, I was telling you yesterday, I saw a video of him when he went and did a freestyle on either Hot 97 or on uh, on Breakfast Club or one of yeah. those shows. And the way he would come up with his flows, they'd start playing the beat and you'd sit, he'd be sitting there and he'd come up with the chorus first. Yeah. The thing he was going to rap, rap back around to, W-R-A-P. Yeah. And uh, then he would just go from there and that was how he built his songs out. And it was like, it's a very raw way to do music. So even with this new album, which again you have to go listen to it, it's great. We'll name some of our favorite songs before we end this uh, this little segment. Um, I feel like he had so much more to grow and so much more, obviously, so much more to offer. And it's just, it's just such an enormous bummer to keep losing people of this talent level to the same thing. And let me tell you, for, for let's do our favorite songs first. Sure. Tell me some of yours before um, I make this final point. I really enjoy the song Come and Go until the beat drops. It's the one with Marshmallow. The beat drop could be a little bit better, but I really like the kind of punk rock punk rock vibe leading up to it. Yeah. Uh, it reminds me a lot of like the Fall Out Boy type of music that I grew up with listening to. So I really really enjoyed that one. Um Stay High is another one of my favorites. It's fantastic. And then I would say Righteous is another great one. That's the one that says my anxiety the size of a planet. Yep. That one's a very intimate talk about anxiety um, and really raw on Juice World's side uh, throughout the entire song. And um, probably the best just kind of head bopper is uh, Blood on My Jeans, in my opinion. That's a good one, too. Mine, uh, as far as favorites through you know three or four listens of the album at this point, would be Tell Me You Love Me featuring Trippy Red. Uh, Wishing Well, which is actually what they're treating as sort of the first single. They put out this like fully animated uh, video for it yesterday, I believe okay. it was, where it's Juice serving as Juice's own therapist. It's like a really creative, cool angle for a music video, and yeah. it looks dope as fuck. I have not gotten the chance to watch the full thing yet. But uh, yeah, Tell Me You Love Me, Wishing Well, Conversations is cool. It's the first track yeah. that's really a song. And then Bad Energy was another one that really caught my ears. So I don't, did we share any of the same favorites? I don't think so. Look at that. We are very different. Look at that. How about that? Variety. That's what we bring here. So, my last argument. This is why this happens, in my opinion. Because this is not a secret that this man had trouble with drugs. Absolutely. No. He's literally talking about them on most of the songs he put out. It's not a secret with any of the guys. No, it never is. It never is. Everybody knew Peep was fucked up. Like, yeah. it was Everybody very... I mean, Mac every day on, on Instagram uh, stories, this fool's like passed out drooling on himself and yeah. shit. You get surrounded when you're when you're in that position, that young and that 
high shooting, like a fucking rocket, your career, right? All of a sudden, you're one of the most famous, rich, on-demand musicians in the world. Yeah. And it's very clear that your trajectory is just straight the fuck up. Everybody around you, they all want a piece of that. And they are all sycophants. And the the morale, it's like the moral over money over morals bullshit we talked about all of 2019, ironically. Morality goes out the window because all these people are focused on their money. And essentially the idea is as long as they can keep the fucker alive, they don't want to take them off the drugs. No. Because the drugs are what is feeding the artistic shit in their minds, right? Well, every song is about the drugs. Yeah. If we take away the drugs, what the fuck's his career? We lose it, yeah. So nobody's like, do, and I'm not saying this is what happened with Juice. I'm not saying it's what happened with Peep or X or anybody. Well, X got murdered in a fucking motorcycle jacking incident. Yeah. But I'm saying this is often the case with rich and powerful people, in particular when they're younger and or when they're mentally ill or addicts. That makes you very susceptible to that type of bullshit treatment by the people around you. Which brings me to my next segment. Kanye West ends and then apparently doesn't end presidential bid. We're back. It, it, another hip hop note, sort of like a, it was reported earlier today that Kanye West had already ended his presidential campaign, which he announced what yes. three days ago, something like that, by July Fourth via, via Twitter. Oh, I'm sorry, yes, yeah, on July the Fourth of July. So yeah. it's been uh, eleven days, I think, if I'm if correct. my math yeah. is correct. Yeah. Um, so. You know, I, from day one, when he got stoned and went out on the VMAs and said he was going to run for president, I was like, no, 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 he isn't. And then uh, and then he actually announces it a few days ago. And then it's announced this morning that he's already canceled it, which may, it was like the most predictable thing of all time. But now it's being reported by the New York Post that he is still in the presidential race. And this is like via TMZ, too. And it's all the same. Usually TMZ breaks this and it ends up the same thing on all these different websites mostly sourcing TMZ, right? But he actually filed with the Federal Election Commission, according to a report from TMZ Wednesday, which is today, he filed Form 1, the statement of organization that says the Kanye 2020 committee will act as the, quote, principal campaign committee. The paperwork listed the party as the birthday party, as we already knew. Um, he's BDY. running BDY. He's running, a, he told everyone that stands for birthday party. That's the party he is running under. Uh, and, and, and then, uh, well, oh, the report also noted he had yet to file form two. So he only got through form one, which I find to be hilarious that they're literally labeled one and two and he got through one and then there was two and he hasn't done it yet, which is a statement of candidacy that confirms he's raised or spent more than $5,000 in campaign activities, which then triggers his candidacy status under federal campaign laws, which is just kind of funny. Five grand is such a low number, dude, to run for president. Like, you know how many pairs of his shoes that he's put out over the years for one pair cost more than five grand on, like, StockX or some shit? And this is the form that he hasn't filled out. You he's tell like, no, nah, I can't be bothered. You, what the shit? Like, it's just, it, I also saw, <laughs> during, like, uh, early voting just ended, right? Yeah. Kanye did, like, a video of him early voting in Wyoming or Montana, wherever sure. the fuck he lives now yeah. on that compound. I think it's Wyoming, yeah. And it was, like, him awkwardly questioning, like, this very much middle-aged white guy about the voting process, and he's like... How come it's easy in some states and difficult in others? And the white guy was like, well, you know, I think that has to do with the constituencies in each state recommend based on the, like, it was just the most odd video ever. Um, but yeah, again, he announced July 4th. Apparently, according to TMZ, he is now back. He literally is filing things to try to make this happen, but it doesn't make sense because he missed like most of the deadlines. Yeah, and we're... We can't get into certain states now. And we're pretty close to November. It doesn't make... I don't see an angle here. He has to know that there's no chance of him legitimately winning this election. And that's where what we were talking about comes in. And first of all, everybody thought he was done because he was trying to get into Florida and they had a July deadline. And to be on the ballot as a third-party candidate, you had to have done it in... Uh, I'm sorry, I guess that July deadline must have already passed, though. And um, he's he needed, missed the like, deadline in several other states yeah. as well. So he really, re realistically, he has zero chance of doing any type of actual damage to the campaigns of real candidates, thankfully, because that's an issue if he, if he was in that position. But this all goes back to the people surrounding him. And for Kanye, as we discussed on 312, your first episode ever, mm -hmm. everyone is aware this man is mentally ill. Yes. And it's not a thing to make fun of. Like, he's legitimately sick. Yes. He's diagnosed bipolar. And he's, I mean, he even has a line, you don't want to see me when I'm off my Lexapro or whatever. 
and he's admittedly gone on and off of his meds and had serious issues with this shit. And like all of his behaviors, classic, manic, up and down, wild, that like even his latest albums, like basically starting with the life of Pablo, in my opinion, you could feel the derailing. Like it was like that album compared to all his other albums. And even if you like life of Pablo, which I know a lot of people do and I do too, but comparably to everything before it, it was almost like comparing like a finished masterpiece of a painting to like me throwing a fucking thing of a uh, spaghetti at a at a you know whatever at the that's wall. A gr- that's actually a great analogy. I would say it's like it's like looking at a Van Gogh and then looking at like a modern art paint splatter and, and being like, went, what the sh- yeah, they're technically it's the same thing or Just whatever, very like that, different. but they're completely opposites. It absolutely felt like once Life of Pablo hit, it was much more just like bop, bop, thrown bop, together. Bop. Yeah haphazardly sort of like last second it felt like as a mental health patient myself it felt like and as a creative like i know that chaotic energy yeah i know what that feels like dude when you've got all these ideas and like you can't quite get them in the spot that you want it was not my beautiful dark twisted fantasy no and i had people coming at me on twitter today like life of pablo rules I'm like bro i'm not saying it doesn't and there's good songs on they're it. great songs on as it. a complete album does it stand up to his previous works no not and in my opinion, it's not close. That's the part why I'm irked because I'm like, have you, did you listen to any of the other fucking yeah. albums, bro? And I understand for some of y'all, I'm older, so like I got old Kanye and got to fully. I, that, that dude was my god at one point. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like that was my creative idol. Sure. And now he's derailed into this, but it's um, it's just really weird to me to watch again, a dude that is clearly in a place where he needs help, and we have no idea if he's getting it. Yeah. Or what the situation is with his family because of the obvious celebrity that surrounds them as well as, like, the most famous family in the fucking world. Are they helping him? Are they actively pushing him towards these manic episodes in, like, seeking press? Because that helps them. Every time Kanye makes headlines, you know who makes money? The fucking Kardashians. Absolutely. It's just getting to a point where it's like we talked about Britney Spears before. Excuse me. I just burped into the microphone. Um, (laughs) That's always what you want on a podcast. It's the same shit, man. All these people benefiting from him. Yeah. Milking the teat. They want to see this. And that circles back to what we were talking about earlier with not getting out of, not getting healthy because you think, people think that it's, that's your outlet to that's creativity. That's your artistic energy. Yeah. It's like how comedians say they can't be funny when they're not depressed. Or not fat. Or not fat or something like that. Yeah. And it's just, we need to look out for our people better. And we need to have a better outlook on that shit as creatives. For Absolutely. Pe- for people who feel that way because, like, as a guy, I've, look, I've been there before. I've done the, like, like when I wrote the silly-ass book I wrote. Like, I did that in a pretty fucked-up place. Like, I still did uh, coke on occasion. Like, I was drinking pretty heavily, definitely smoking sometimes. Um, I wasn't happy, and I was utilizing that sort of, like, artistic. I thought that shit was cool. And it does feel cool when you're young and you're an artist and you're in this dark place and you're like, fuck it, man, I'll just create, man. Mm -hmm. Like, I get the vibe, but that has to be very temporary and you need people around you who can pull you out. And here's the other piece of that puzzle. Um, The other side is still better. Yes. Because I'm on that side now. And I'll tell you, it's a lot easier to create with a clear head than it is with one that's filled with shit. And... It just breaks my heart that these people feel like they have to stay in that broken place to be funny. Absolutely. Because it's not true. No. And too many comics feel that way. It's like, well, look at Dave Chappelle. At any point in his career, did you find him to be some fucking, like, losing his mind drunk or drug addict? Or, no! Dave's always pretty had a, had a pretty level head. And again, I would have to point out that he smokes quite a bit of weed. That's the option if you have to have one, folks. Um... You don't have to be Jerry Seinfeld. There's a million examples. You yeah. don't have to be a fucking degenerate or a pedophile like the Leah or or jerking off on people like CK. You can be a healthy minded individual Absolutely. and make very good art in any fucking form. You don't have to be losing your goddamn mind, Chris. And most likely more impactful and meaningful art when you're in that type of clear headed mindset. And you can still discuss all the dark shit you want. Absolutely. I talk about this shit every show. We still bring up drinking every episode. Absolutely. I haven't had a drink in two and a half years. Juice could have gotten clean and undepressed and then still made songs about the experience is my point. 
because oh, he's would have lost been, his authenticity. I, no, I don't I agree wouldn't. with that. I don't agree with that. Going through and 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 we'll get into it eventually about what my 2018 and 2019 looked like. But going through trials and tribulations that I did over those two years and coming out of them and now where I'm at now, in a healthier place, in a clear-headed mindset, more confident about myself, I can talk about that time even more accurately help people even more that you have are going the perspective through it, on it now. because I've now gotten out of it. I understand how to continue to grow and growth is one of the most important things out there. You should always want to be growing and changing and never lose your curiosity to get to a point where you can use all the bad shit that you went through to help other people still, because yes, you can help them while you're hurting. Sure. Absolutely. But I guarantee you, you can help them significantly more when you have Put yourself in a position where you don't have to worry about yourself as much anymore. Where you've you already can, overcome. You've already overcome. You can really delve into helping others and help them go through the shit you went through so they don't have to go through it again. Greatest, I mean, I'll give you my personal example. It, it, it is not that difficult for me to come in here and talk mental health issues when I'm going through them because it's like therapy almost. Sure. But man, go listen to last week's show and then listen to today. Yeah. When I'm in a better place mentally, I'm able to think more clearly, communicate more effectively, get, put the shit together in my head properly. It's not such a struggle. I'm not forgetting every other goddamn word. It's just a totally different... You can be more effective really at anything if you're healthy, right? Health begets success. Absolutely. I'd completely agree. Unhealthiness does, does in no long-form, long-term situation ever... Has somebody benefited from being unhealthy? No. You just end up dying. That's how it works. Like our bodies aren't meant to be unhealthy and our brains aren't meant to be in that dark place. So I, while I get all the struggle there, it's like, nah, the light is always better than the dark. And in the case of Kanye, just to put a bow on this segment, these fucking Kardashians, I do not like being a Kardashian hater. Because I think they're, they're, what they've accomplished as a family is some next level insane genius yeah. business shit. That being said, and they do seem to be doing some positive now, like Kim and Kanye getting into the fucking White House, which the, the, he's trying to make the argument that he only put the hat on so they could get people out of prison. That was a fucking lie. Yeah. You think we're stupid enough to believe that? No. And if you bought that, that re-examine it, please. And the hat is, that's not... That's not the point you want to make with the hat. If that was true, you wouldn't use the hat to make that point. Well, he's saying he only put the hat on so Trump would invite him. Yeah. That that was the only reason he got the invite and that like now he's thrown it all away or whatever. But the point is Kim and him, okay. they, they seem to be doing good stuff. Yeah. At least a little. Yeah. As far as I can tell. Kim I don't... was doing that thing where she was like traveling around getting falsely accused people out of prison, right? Still doing yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, that's like a huge yeah. part of their whole advocacy now or Which whatever. Which is huge. That's awesome. That's great. But if it's just a band-aid on like an otherwise selfish uh, journey towards more billions of dollars, which it turns out there aren't as many, many of as we thought, yeah, um, then no, it's not okay. And if they're letting Kanye, who at one point when he would say wild shit like, I'm the greatest artist of this generation, I literally wholeheartedly believed him, and if you didn't, I would fight you. If they're letting this man derail into madness for the sake of their own benefit, I am just going to snap. Because that would be the worst fucking thing ever. No, so I hope needs, that's not the case. He definitely deserves the he he's he deserves the help. He deserves somebody. I really hope he has somebody that's genuinely looking out for his betterment and his, his best health. interest. Yeah. man. it doesn't feel like that's the case. No, is what I'm saying. It but and you it, never know. He might be. I don't know. I don't know what he's like in person. I don't know if he's just like no. I have to do this. I have to do this. I have nobody can get in my way. This is what I'm doing. Even, yeah, and that's the thing. He's got so much power. No one man should have all that power. Like he once you get to that place, and if if it is hard to, because you can't just tell a person, "Hey, you're sick. You're going to the hospital." It doesn't work that way, no. bro. And in some states, it's damn near impossible to get somebody committed. It's just like a state by state deal. Um, man, even with like my 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 uh, my Mimi when she started having like severe Alzheimer's symptoms, and we were like, "We have to put you." in a community for this yeah a memory care community and she didn't want to go and no. there was nothing anybody could do about it she was like no i'm fine fuck y'all and in fact it just made her angrier which Absolutely. ironically made her symptoms worse and it's like so my point is this i don't know what the answer is i don't know what's actually going on but i'm fucking worried and it's a whole the whole thing is just a terrible look and it, it 
Kanye doesn't need to be running for president. No, he needs no. to be making music and then secondarily shoes, a pair of which I'm wearing right the fuck now. RBP313 is also brought to you by Keeps. If you're struggling with hair loss or you refuse to take steps to help yourself or have tried nonsense remedies that didn't work, listen up, RBP gang. Keeps is here for you. I've had many good friends struggle with hair loss since college, some since high school. Good friends I care about deeply in the same boat as you. It's incredibly common. Two out of three guys experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35, and we're excited to provide you with the tools you need to combat that hair loss. The good news with today's and advancements advancements, excuse me, in science. Keeps offers proven treatments that can combat the symptoms of hair loss and help you keep the hair you have at half the cost of your local pharmacy. You don't have to go broke to avoid going bald. Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA-approved hair loss products out there. Some you may have tried before, uh, but probably never for this price. Plus, Keeps now offers a prescription shampoo to keep your scalp healthy, too. Keeps has revolutionized the way men are treated for hair loss. Thanks to Keeps, you no longer have to go to the doctor's office for your hair loss prescription. You visit a doctor online, which in this day and age is... That's the ticket. You don't want to go to the office. You want to go online, get your hair loss medication delivered to your home safely. No waiting room, no pharmacy checkout line, people coughing on your damn back while you're standing there and shit. Get doctor attention and discreet drug delivery all from the comfort and privacy of your home. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash RBP. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash RBP. Keeps.com slash RBP. Next segment people we want to fight. So we usually do a segment called famous people we want to fight, right? But yesterday, Coles and I got to talking and he was like, dude, can we please do a segment on the assholes who cruise around in old cop cars? So this is a variation of the recurring segment we've done many times. I think the last celebrity I wanted to fight was Ninja, by the way, and, I, and, I, and I'm still very interested in if somebody can make that happen. Um... You know how many times in my fucking life, dude, that I have been sitting in a light when a 15-year-old Crown Vic with a goddamn cop spotlight on the side mirror pulls up next to me and I, like, shit my pants thinking they're going to run my plates and make fuck on my whole life? It happens frequently. Yeah. I haven't been arrested in, like, over a decade. Still feel that. And, I, and even if I'm in, like, the passenger seat sober and none of us have done anything wrong, I'm like, fuck. Just because I've had enough experiences with the police. And they always leave them half white and black, just like they bought them at the police op- auction. Yes. They don't maybe like a, a couple stripes. Make any effort to make it not look like a cop at car. At least take the spotlight off. Why is the spotlight there? There's no way. I do not believe that a single person that has bought a Crown Vic from a police auction has ever used the spotlight. I don't even think you're Please allowed to. Me. I don't think it you works. Might not. I, it probably doesn't. They probably took everything out you need. And honestly... It doesn't stop with Crown Vicks. It goes on Dodge Chargers. I am so tired. Uh, so I just well, did so this 16. Is a, this is a newer version, This is right? a newer version, newer version. That's so the Dodge Charger. And so this all comes after my 16 and a half hour journey from Charlotte, North Carolina to Austin, Texas, where on that journey, I would be cruising nicely along some Alabama back roads or something like that. And all of a sudden, somebody that just got their U.S. Army bonus check pulls out behind me in a 2016 Dodge Charger automatic wannabe muscle car. And I think a cop's coming up on me. I slow down to 70 and they pass me and that's it. And all I have all this anxiety for no reason. And don't the worst, the worst are the soccer moms that decide to go with the Ford Explorer. And they don't stop there. They put the roof rack. On the Ford Explorer. So that it looks like a cop car. So it looks like a cop car. It looks exactly like a cop car. There is no way you need a roof rack to take the kids to soccer practice and back and then the grocery store. That's where you strap one of the kids though if they get too loud. Because there's like six kids in every single one of those cars. You need that rack to put one of those children up there. I would be acceptable if I saw children up there. But when it's just the roof rack, I think another cop's coming up on me. And then it's Karen going 75 down I-35. Yeah, you're cruising down the highway, and in the rear view, you see what appears to be a cop car approaching, and you chunk your joint out the window and call your lawyer on speaker, and then the car rolls up next to you, and it's a 70-year-old retired florist named Dante who bought that thing from a police auction in 1998. Freaking Dante, man. Fuck that guy. I can't believe it, man. Just hit the fucking spotlight with a hammer. That's all I ask. Knock the spotlight off the car with a hammer and go about your business, bro. If you didn't have the spotlight thing, it would be so much less intimidating. But like you said, most of them, it's not just that they leave the spotlight. It's that they either, they've got some type of thing on the top that makes it look copy or the ones that are actually uh, purchased from cop auctions. 
they leave like the de- the paint details from these 90s cop yeah. cars on this shit. It's white and black, just like it would be a cop car. So he- the solution is simple. Paint. I passed an orange Charger yesterday. Totally fine. Good looking car. I bet you I know who that was. Yeah? Yeah. Shouts to my buddy Joe. I oh, guarantee it was him. Well, I Joe's gar- got a nice Charger and it's be, orange. There and- can't be that many orange Dodge Chargers in Austin. I bet you it was Joe. I don't know. We're like in Texas. A lot of are there a lot of Astros fans in Austin, or is that just you? I'm telling you, I'm. I, still, I think it's there's there no there are dozens of us. There's dozens again, dozens of us, dozens. There's a lot of Astros fans in Austin. But yeah, if you're gonna buy a car that resembles a cop car, just paint it a color other than white, black, or gray, please. It's For like us. The, the only other thing I can think of is that these people are like, all right, here's the move. I'm moving weight. I'm going to go cop one of these former cop cars so that police think I'm police and don't pull me over. No policeman in the history of time has ever seen one of these bunk-ass fucking side spotlight having resold auction cars and thought, oh, that's another one of us, and like shot the fucking salute at like that guy as he passes. Like, Have a no, good one, Dante. If anything, they're more fucking suspicious of Dante because of this shit. They're yeah. like, this motherfucker bought one of the old cop cars, and he left the spotlight on. He's trying to look like me. Time to run these plates. One of us. One of us. Google, gobble, one of us. Somebody put that as a comment on uh, on our announcement that you were here or whatever on Instagram, and it made me very, very happy. It made me happy as well. The gang's yeah. been nothing but positive and supporting throughout this whole process. Very so loving. I appreciate the hell of you guys. Look, you especially, guys are awesome. I got arrested. The first time I ever got arrested, Coles, was by an unmarked Secret Service vehicle. So oh. I am very suspicious of these unmarked cop car situations that's and a whole nother rabbit hole in my town they now have electric blue ford what's the sedan the fusions electric blue ford fusion undercover cars which is terrifying terrifying oh yeah it's not great yeah that just looks like there's a cop in it <laughs> like a cop that really has like some fucking serious uh, self-esteem issues too yeah yeah, the undercover cop cars are no fun, and the car anxiety is at an all-time high already. So yeah, let's just you know avoid buying the old cop cars. I can't even drive anymore. Hey, if you're uh, one of the many members of the RBP gang who is a is a police officer, holler at me. I want to know what y'all think about these fools driving around in these fake ass cop cars, scaring the shit out of everybody because they they genuinely piss me off. Again. Coles and I have gone long. We had another segment to do that I won't even tease you with. It was actually suggested to us by a listener that we're very excited to do. And you know what? Fuck it. We'll do it on Patreon this weekend. Yeah. Um, Friday episode on Patreon is going to have a segment that honestly was one of the ones I was most excited to do today. It's going to crush. Yeah. That is going to be so fucking funny and ridiculous and actually kind of gross, too, if you really think about it. Or from delicious. Like a, yeah, but from like a... Uh, well, we'll have different... See? That's the difference between a 21-year-old talking fast food and a 33-year-old mm. because, like, ah. I, I, I have to think about, like, my heart exploding. That's and, very and true. You, you have to think I, about, like... Nothing. N- nothing, really. Really, if I'll shit harder the next day, that's about yeah. all. The next bowel movement. Yeah. Which, really you know, I'm just trying to even worry about the getting to that next bowel movement. You're just, like, thinking about how it might suck a little more if you crush all that fast food. So there's a little teaser. It is fast food related. And we'll do our final segment that we had to pull from today because, again... The chemistry. We're just crushing it, going long on all these segments. There's worse issues to have, There for are sure. much worse issues to have. So patreon.com slash Ross Bolin podcast to support the show, to get an ad-free premium episode every single Friday. Uh, Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, is just another platform that allows us to bring you more episodes directly without the need for advertising backing our show. So you're directly supporting the podcast, and in return, you get additional ad-free premium episodes every single Friday. And Chris and I, Coles and I, are going to be working on a whole bunch of other ways to bring y'all more stuff on Patreon. Chris is working on a column right now that's like um, a more in-depth introduction to himself for y'all that should be out in the next few days on Patreon. So if you're looking to hear more about Chris up front, like obviously over the course of the next several thousand episodes, you will learn everything about him that you need to learn. But if you wanted some extra stuff up front that we didn't get into yet, maybe a little more detail on his background and what brought him here, he's going to write you a cool column on patreon.com slash Ross Bolin podcast. Of course, we have, uh, as I teased on social media, we have another batch of merch coming in 2020. Not sure when yet. We're going to be talking about that in the coming weeks as well. When to place our order, how long it will take to get here. Of course, all the COVID stuff fucks with all the manufacturing stuff. So, like, 
at the very least before the holidays, I can promise you that. Um, but again, that will only be available to supporters on patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast, as I like to call them, dues-paying members of the RBP gang. And uh, we appreciate each and every one of y'all who is there, especially our most respected OGs. Before you head out to take on the world, it's time for some very important, annou- very important announcements. I'm no longer an auctioneer. Um, first of all, you got three, four, five legal obligations you have to complete as a result of having listened to this entire podcast. First, follow your new co-host, Coles everywhere. Chris, again, give them your Instagram, your Snapchat, and your Twitter. Um, also, uh, I've had two people, my mom and uh, some, I'll just say, somebody you met yesterday, tell me that you have to uniform your social media. I know. It's coming, guys. I promise you it's coming. The but for issue now, is, but for now, uh, my Twitter is at Q0ULS. That's Coles, Q0ULS. My Snapchat is at Chris underscore C-O-U-L-S-O-N, Chris underscore Colson. And my Instagram is at chrissc99. So make sure you check me out on those. Uh, If you want to get in touch with me quickly, hit me up on Snapchat. As soon as you add me, I'll be able to receive your messages. And I've been doing my best to get back to all you guys or Instagram DM. Uh, Those are usually the quickest ways. But look forward to hearing from you guys and you guys being a part of this journey, man. It's been awesome so far. It's called getting in on the ground floor because if you hit Chris now, you'll probably get a response. A few months from now... It's going gonna, it's gonna to be like me, where you, it's hard, the shit stacks up, you can't get to everybody, man. I wish we could, but it's just not feasible for the most part. So, that's your first legal ob. Follow your new co-ho- co-host, your Coles host. Somebody made that joke on Twitter yesterday, I'm just going to steal it. Your new Coles host, Coles, Chris Colson, everywhere on social media. Also, rate and review this show wherever you listen. Apple Podcasts is most preferable. Five stars, a few sentences about why you love us, what, why you think RBP is a good podcast, why other people should listen to it. But apparently we're available on all kinds of platforms I didn't even fucking know about, like Google Play. Who the fuck is listening on Google Play? How does it even get there? I don't know. But uh, if you like write reviews. I like to think we have one person that's just clipping our entire podcast and putting it on Google Play for like their grandmother. And there's like four, four people there listening. I have no idea. Just rate and review wherever you can. Your next legal lab, your third one, Today is to tell any one person, a friend, a family member, a coworker, a neighbor, any one individual you can think of, share the Ross Boland podcast with them. If it's somebody that has mental health issues, send them episode 311. Tell them, hey, this guy talks in depth and very transparently about his own mental health struggles. It's also a comedy show that gets into animals and pirates. You don't have to say that last part, um, but you know the deal. Share the show with one person this week, one person next week, one person every week until the week you die. We have uh, our sponsors for today. You got to support our sponsors. Use our sponsor codes. At the very least, you're legally obligated to go to the URLs so that they can see that, hey, these listeners are really interested in these products. This is how sponsorship works. If we move these incredible products that we've brought to you for a discount in some cases, then we get more sponsorship money and the show gets to continue to grow and we get to continue to do our jobs and do this as a career and everybody wins. FelixGrayGlasses.com slash RBP. I showed you all a couple of my pairs if you're on youtube.com slash Bowling Media, you can see them. Felix Gray is incredible. I'm seriously a huge, huge fan of their products. Do not sleep on Felix Gray. They are so, so worth it and so awesome. Bombas.com slash RBP. I showed you all my socks. 20% off your first purchase at bombas.com slash RBP. And then, of course, keeps. Dot com slash RBP. Use those codes. Follow us on Instagram at the Ross Boland Podcast, on Twitter at Ross Boland Pod, or on Facebook if you are either Coles' mom or the middle aged aunt of one of our listeners. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at W R B O L E N. I'm at W R Boland everywhere except for Twitch, where I'm twitch.tv slash boss rolling and i will likely be on again tonight maybe with coles maybe not depends what he's got going moving wise check out bowling media's television and film podcast oysters clams and cockles available wherever rbp is available today we covered the back half of dark season three the final season of dark including the finale reviewed the series as a whole it was fucking chaos my brain hurts so bad the fact that i pulled off another episode of any podcast today is frankly a miracle uh again i would credit that to mental clarity and clean living and also Coles and I've been working out the last couple days I can't feel my legs knees ankles back triceps my biceps are okay still um we'll take care of those tomorrow yeah that'll that'll yeah we did leg day yesterday for everybody who's been saying chicken leg fucking duo we're we're taking care of it and I was gonna say if Ross's legs looked bigger when he held up the socks today that's why we're taking chicken leg removal day once a week starts now I don't know if taking care of it's the right look it We're won't matter how progress. many leg days we do. My legs will still look the way they do right now for the rest of my life. I can promise all of you that. It's not something that can change. In high school baseball, we did leg day twice a week. Nothing happened. 
The calves stay the exact same size. The, the thighs might gain a little detail. What's that called? Detail. Uh, uh, I know what you're looking for. Oh, no. Oh, no. We went the whole we show without it. one of these moments where now everybody's screaming at their... Uh, at their when you're not trying to bulk, so the, you're I trying know, to... Tone. Tone! They might gain some tone. Gosh. Coles with a save. But uh, they will not get bigger. It's just not a thing that happens. All right? Um, what was I saying? Oh, Perry Mason... Through episode four, if you're watching Perry Mason on HBO, we also covered that on Oysters, Clams, and Cockles. We, uh, yeah, that'll do it for RBP 313, produced by Grant Davis and Mike Moody Garcia of Permanent Record Studios in Austin, Texas. I will be back tomorrow with a solo episode. Haven't had time to do it yet. And then Friday, as we mentioned, Chris and I, Coles and I will both be back for another ad-free premium edition of RBP exclusively on patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast. Ad-free Friday episodes on Patreon. Get in there. Support the show for access. Coles and I will both be there this Friday. You are not alone. Podman gets paid. Respect Mr. Park. Strength and honor. Gang, gang, gang. Peace be with you. And and also also with you. you.